Good afternoon, National 5 Chemistry, how are we all doing? As good as possible, I hope, under the current circumstances. So far, in the course, we have looked at a brief review of atomic structure. We have also um, looked at things called isotopes. That was new to us. Turns out that every atom of uh, hydrogen in the universe is not identical to every other atom of hydrogen. Some of them have got different numbers of neutrons. Uh, same number of protons, though, so they're the same element, and that makes them isotopes. That's what we looked at last time. We also looked at ions. That's uh, if you add or remove electrons onto an atom, it becomes charged, and we call it an ion. Now, uh, in today's uh, lesson, I would like to look at two things. I would like to remind you of number one, and I would like to introduce, possibly, or remind you of number two. Um, number one is that atoms want a full outer layer of electrons. So they want a full outer layer. Now, last time, we looked at a way that they could do this. We looked at losing or gaining electrons to form ions, but this time, today, we're going to look at the second way that atoms can uh, equip themselves with a full outer layer of electrons. Um, that's by sharing electrons with each other. And when they do that, we call that covalent bonding. So we're going to look at covalent bonds today. Let's uh, draw an atom of, ooh, I don't know, fluorine, for example. Incredibly poisonous, really nasty gas. Incredibly reactive, but that, that's okay, we don't really have it here. We've just got a, a drawing of it. Now, um, fluorine, if I want to do the full-scale drawing, I would say fluorine's got nine protons in its centre. So nine positives. It's actually got ten neutrons, which we'll do in black, although we don't really care about them. Ten neutrons, nine positive protons, um, and it's got nine electrons. They will be uh, layered up as two electrons here and seven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Brilliant. Very, very quick reminder, just in case it slipped your attention. The way I know this is if I look up fluorine on my periodic table, I find it has the symbol F. And it has a mass number of 19, but more importantly, it has an atomic number of 9. Which means that is how I know it's got 9 protons. That, take away that, is how I know it's got 10 neutrons. And in a normal atom, then the electrons are going to be the same as the protons. So there's 9 of them, 2 and 7. Please remember, of course, the reason it's got 7 electrons, that's why it's in group 7. In case you didn't suss that. Um... So this is obviously not happy, is it? This is not a happy atom, because it's not got a full outside layer. Now, last time we talked about losing electrons, or gaining electrons, to, to give to something else. Um, sorry, my phone just told me I was in battery saver mode, which isn't helping. I'll make this a quick video, you'll be very glad to know. Now, what we're going to do with covalent bonds is we're not losing or gaining, we are sharing. It's all about sharing pairs of electrons. How nice, isn't it? Uh, let's all share our electrons, ladies and gentlemen. That way we can all be happy. So, this fluorine atom does not exist as just F. I'm hoping you maybe remember that these are called diatomic atoms. F2 diatomic elements. There are seven of them. Hoff Brinkles. Hoff Brinkle. They all go about as pairs, and we're just about to revise why that happens today. Um, so here's a fluorine. Here's another fluorine over here. I could draw another one of these, it would look exactly the same. I'm going to be lazy and save time and say, of course, there's no point because they would only have seven. So why don't we overlap another fluorine atom with this one? And I'll show these as crosses, these electrons, just for clarity. So let's share a pair of electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the seven that it had by itself and then it gains this one. So this now has... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, so what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ha! I can't count, sorry. Excellent. This here, the shared pair of electrons, is a covalent bond. Um, so for National 5... What they want you to know about covalent bonds is a few things. For starters, they want you to realise that it's a single shared pair of electrons. This is a bit of a complex diagram, so there's a faster way to draw this. We can simply do F, F, and that. 
You see a lot of these on my board, or we all do once we're back at work, and that is just a shorthand way of showing that shared pair of electrons. Even faster, of course, is just to write it as two Fs, and that's what these guys all do. Um, pause this for just two seconds. Thanks, I had run out of paper there. Um, now, what I'm going to do uh, in the task today is I'm going to ask you to draw, like I did here, I'm going to ask you to draw a... Oh, by the way, again, another word that we bandy about a lot is molecule. This is now a molecule. So molecules are formed from two or more atoms sharing pairs of electrons in covalent bonds. So this is covalent bonding, guys. Um, what's it, what does it do? It makes sure that all the atoms involved have a full outer layer, like these two guys do now. And how does it do this? By sharing pairs of electrons. I will draw one more, which is a trickier one than this. I'm just about to draw an oxygen molecule. Um, let me do this for us. Oxygen. Its numbers are 8. Sorry, my apologies. Its numbers are, um, mass number is 16 and atomic number is 8. So 8 protons, 8 electrons. Let's draw one here. I, do you know what I'm going to do? Shortcut. I'm going to not draw the inside layer of electrons because if you notice, I did nothing with the inside layers. They are already full up. So I'm going to show the outside layers only. You can do the same. Life's too short. So six electrons here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's overlap another oxygen with it. And six electrons here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are still not happy, are we? Um, that's okay. You're allowed to share more than one pair of electrons. So let's delete that. If this was on my board, I could properly rub these out. And let's bring that down to here. And let's bring that down to here. Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Brilliant. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How about that? The oxygen you're breathing right at this moment is still, yes, yeah, diatomic. It's a pair of oxygen atoms. But they're not just held together by one pair of electrons. They're actually held together by two. Still O2, of course, not O3, because that number there means there's two atoms in this molecule. Um, or anything else. So it's still O2. It just happens that it's held together by a double bond. So this is called a double bond. Which does sound like a knockoff of James Bond, doesn't it? The name's Bond. Double bond. Um, sorry, I'll never do that again. Uh, and you can have, here's a wee hint, you can have more than double bonds. Um, I'm going to stop there, because task one, I'm going to ask you to draw molecules like this for each of these seven for me. Before we leave this behind, I remember what I was going to say to you. I remember what I was going to say. There's one more thing the SQA want you to know. They want you to realise that because there are positive charges here and positive charges here. Let's draw it in. Wait, do you know what I'll do? I'll do it in this one. Oxygen has got eight positives and eight positives. Now, these positives will pull on these negative electrons because these are negative, of course. These electrons have a negative charge. And there's an attraction here, and there's an attraction here, and that's what holds the whole molecule together. The force of attraction from positive to negative and positive to negative. Plus, as an added bonus, the atoms get to fill up all their electron layers. Everybody wins. Isn't covalent bonding great? If we were in the lab at this point, we'd go and do an experiment on it. But don't worry, we will do an experiment when we're all back together in August and I get to see your uh, wonderful faces. Um... The last thing I would like to talk about today is shapes of molecule, guys. There are some shapes of these molecules that the SQA want you to know about. They want you to know about, let me just go and check, I'm pretty sure it's four, but I will go and double check. Yeah, I was right, it's only four, but you know what, I'm trying to do a professional job here at home, honestly, so I thought I'd go and double check. Um, here are the shapes of uh, covalent molecules the SQA wants you to be aware of. Fortunately, I stole a box of Molly Mods from school, I didn't steal it, I borrowed it to help my son with his higher chemistry before shutdown. So, uh, this, this shape here is called linear, as in it's a line. Because it is linear. Examples of linear molecules would be 
uh, F2, BR2, H2, any of the simple ones. They're just a nice straight line. Uh, now we're in two, or HF in fact, HF as well, would be, let's build an HF, just two seconds. Let's turn this into hydrofluoric acid, there we go, brilliant. Still the same shape. Um, this one here, this is called angular. Uh, and the only example they want you to be instantly familiar with is my glass of water. Uh, that I could do with a drink of. That is angular, guys. There's a reason that it's not a straight line, but I'm not going to tell you that reason. Come back in sixth year and ask me, and I'll be happy to fill you in. Um, I'm going to do the next one first. This this one is called a pyramidal molecule. Pyramidal. Or pyramidal. Same thing. Um, pretend there's not a hole on the top. I'm going to cover that up because I haven't got the right type of atom for that. Um, this is basically, don't know if you can see that, I'm hoping you can see it. Um, it's like a tiny wee pyramid, which is why it's called pyramidal. It sits up from the paper. And the example they want you to know about that is this one here. Now this molecule, don't know if you remember that or not, this is a covalent molecule you find in urine. Lovely. Uh, P is called ammonia. One of my least favorite chemicals in the whole world. Um, about 1 in 5 people can't really smell ammonia. Uh, 1 in 20 are super sensitive to it. <laughs> Take a wild guess which one I am. Um, and the last shape of molecule here, guys, is called tetrahedral. Tetra as in 4, hedral as in 3D shape. So this is quite a cool little shape here. If I hold it like this, it looks like there's 3 at the bottom and 1 at the top. But there's really not. It's completely symmetrical in all dimensions. It's quite funky because you can't tell which way up it is. So this is a tetrahedral molecule. An example of this is in your gas cooker, methane. CH4 is a tetrahedral. These are the little shapes that pile out your gas cooker and then you set fire to them. So these are the four um, shapes of molecule that SQA wants you to know, guys. I'm very nearly finished. There's just one last thing and I stupidly forgot to include it in my introduction. See back here? What I said about covalent uh, molecules, covalent, covalent bonding rather. Covalent bonding, um, the general rule of thumb the SQA wants you to know is that covalent substances are usually, that sounds like a weasel word, because it is a weasel word. It's not a set in stone rule. Usually made from two non-metal elements stuck together. You notice I haven't covered a single metal today. Not a single one. Fluorine, hydrogen, all these guys, none of these are metals. If we went to my shapes page, then there is not a single metal in here. It's all non-metals. So as a good rule of thumb, covalent substances are usually made of two non-metals joined together. Sharing pairs of electrons, you can have more than one pair shared if you need to. Okay, you can share more than one pair. And why do they bother sharing these pairs? Well, that gives the atoms a full outer layer so they're all happy. And last of all, as I said earlier on, the pair of electrons or pairs of electrons are negative and they are equally attracted by these positive nuclei, the protons. That is all I want to say. I hope you've had a good day. Um, I'll set up a couple of assignments based on this, guys. Maybe multiple choice marking for a change, actually. I think I'll do it that way. Uh, for the second half, and the first half is I'm going to ask you to draw these molecules for these seven diatomic elements. Thank you for listening, folks. Bye-bye.